does that Tolkien quote go? One network to rule them all. One network to bind them. Okay, that might not be exactly right, but it definitely ends with bind them. And that's what we need in our local and personal area networks. One network access point that does seem to be taking over the world is BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, from smartwatches to headphones to connected sneakers and a whole lot of nodes in between, BLE is hooking up the IoT with low power, faster data speeds, longer range, it definitely binds them. But what's next? Where can BLE go from here? To cars, of course. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. And seriously, if you're going to add BLE to your next automotive design, you need to watch this one. Stephen Lamoge from Texas Instruments joins me today, and we are driving toward the future with BLE in the front seat. And in the back seat, and uh, under the hood, and, well, let's get started. <laughs> And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Bluetooth Low Energy for Automotive Designs from Texas Instruments. Hey, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me join. Okay, so first off, why would I want Bluetooth for my automotive applications? Yeah, so the, the main driver for Bluetooth Low Energy and automotive applications is connecting the smartphone to the vehicle. The easiest way to connect a smartphone to the vehicle, you can't change the, what's inside the smartphone. And so you have to utilize the wireless connectivity that's on the phone. And the lowest power way to do it, and easiest way to do it, is to use BLE. You have Wi-Fi on it, but that's pretty high power, especially when the car is off. So if you are going to make the decision to connect a smartphone to the vehicle, you have a lot of opportunities to do other things. So from a BLE perspective, it's one system that you add to the vehicle and multiple use cases. So you can use it to as phone as a key for passive entry, passive start, remote keyless entry. You can use it for cable replacement, which is good because you can replace weight on the vehicle. And then you can also have personalization that you can start doing from your phone to your vehicle. And again, from a low power perspective, when the car is off, conserving energy on the car is, is critical. And BLE is a very low power wireless technology to do that. So what exactly is TI doing in this space specifically? Yeah, so we have a portfolio of Bluetooth Low Energy devices that we take this portfolio and we qualify these parts for automotive. In fact, from the beginning of the design, we make sure the ecosystem and the specifications are in place to help get to qualification. So our portfolio, we do have the, the CC2640R2F, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We're pretty proud of this device. It is one of the lowest power automotive qualified devices in the industry. It is our fourth generation of connectivity, so very robust Bluetooth automotive stack and part. It's Bluetooth 5 ready, so it can be upgraded to Bluetooth 5. It's set up for automotive applications. We have a wettable flanks package that's on the device for automotive, and then it's qualified to grade 2 temp. We're going to continue to innovate in this space too. This is an emerging market, and it's going to take more innovation to help cost down the systems and help customers achieve their goals. The reason our device is good for this and, and provides a platform for innovation is we have a software-defined radio. This means that when we want to add new features or the customers want new features, it's easier to implement in our device because it's a software change versus having to develop new silicon. So this allows us to be very flexible in the emerging market. And we're also providing what we call real-time localization features in our device, which allows you to use standard BLE communications at the same time figuring out where the Bluetooth target device is, say in a key fob or a phone, around the vehicle, which is critical to vehicle access. And lastly, our commitment, TI is an automotive machine, right? And we're plugged into it. And so we have a lot of experience from the BLE perspective, but we also have a lot of quality and reliability experience from automotive. This part is part of that ecosystem and we're gonna continue to do that. So what if I'm developing on one gigahertz or Wi-Fi and now I'm interested in Bluetooth for automotive, but I really don't want to learn a whole new system. How can you help me out here? Good question. So TI has what we call the SimpleLink MCU platform for our microcontrollers. The CC2640R2F Q1 is part of this. And what you see here is a common microcontroller platform. Let's say if you're developing in sub one gig and you want to move to a Bluetooth low energy part, you usually have the challenge of relearning an entire device and an entire development platform. That's, that's a lot. 
And so we want to make it easier for our customers to just know TI and move without having to learn the foundation of development. And that's what we're doing here. With Simple Link platform, you can start with sub one gigahertz on say the CC13X2 devices, and then you want to try BLE, you can move right over to BLE, you can move your SDK and your application software and get load it right on the device and start developing right away. You do not have to relearn the device. Obviously you have to learn the technology, the wireless technology, but the development platform, the tools, and the know-how all transfer over. Okay, so we've talked about why BLE, but how does this fit into the existing ecosystem of automotive design? Sure. So right now, if you have a passive entry, passive start key fob, that means you walk up to the vehicle and you can have the key fob in your pocket and it authenticates you as you get close to the vehicle. It knows how close you are. You grab the door handle and the door handle opens and then you don't have to insert the key fob into a slot in a car or insert the key. You can just start the car and go. And that's the highest end technology today. And that's what we call LF plus UHF. And that's low frequency plus ultra high frequency. The low frequency localizes the key fob, meaning it knows how close you are and where you are around the vehicle. And the ultra high frequency authenticates that it's the right key fob getting into the vehicle. And it knows whether you're inside or outside the vehicle. This is great, but there are some things that automotive industry wants to do. One of them is it's not secure. And so we have these things called relay attacks or man in the middle attacks where you can have your key fob sitting inside your house and you can have attackers come up with a briefcase, relay the signal to a middleman, and they can actually get in the car and drive away. So that's a big problem. BLE helps to solve that. Also, you don't have smartphone connectivity with UHF. And so when you add BLE to the ecosystem, now you can connect your smartphone to the key fob, you can connect your smartphone to the car, and you get the benefit of relay attack. So you can add BLE to the existing LF and UHF system if you want to utilize and be back compatible, or you can move to the future really is only BLE. Then that's a cost down for the system. You have a BLE only key fob, your smartphone's connected, and you can now just have the BLE antennas on the vehicle. Okay, automotive design is a challenging environment to say the least. How is this technology going to perform? Yeah, you're right. 2.4 gigahertz. There's a bunch of metal. There's a bunch of people. Metal reflects 2.4 gigahertz. People absorb it. It's super challenging. But there's a way to, to use BLE to enable this type of, of system. And really, the way you do this is to be strategic about how you place different BLE satellite nodes. And we're not specifying that you need a certain number, but we do know that the number of nodes that you need, the robustness that you need is going to increase when you add more nodes. Right, so there's a balance between adding not too many nodes for the right cost, but at the same time adding enough nodes to be able to locate the person around the car. And you know, here we're showing four nodes. We think at a minimum, four to five is where you need to be. But we have them on the outside of the car. And so you put them in places where you can get the 2.4 gigahertz out of the vehicle and have the best range in the areas where there's plastic on the car, for example, bumpers, rocker panels, things like that. And then you got to put them on the around the vehicle so that if someone's walking around the vehicle or approaching from different sides, the BLE ecosystem can detect that from each side of the car. And so the more nodes, the better. And then also what we talked about software features in the CC2640 R2FQ1, we're going to also provide software features that help each satellite node detect where the key fob is and where the smartphone is. Okay, so if I want to use BLE for car access, how is TI going to help me? So we have the CC2640R2F Q1, and this device has a couple of different features, and I'll focus on the hardware first. So it is a standalone BLE wireless microcontroller. And the reason why standalone is, is important is because you can put it in very, very small places inside the vehicle, like door handles or you know rocker panels, very small areas to make sure you get the maximum amount of range in each node, and it's very low power. So when you're not using the BLE, you can shut this part down. You don't need to have you know, Wi-Fi or regular Bluetooth running at the same time at some of the integrated solutions. It's also very low power. Like I said, this device is the lowest power automotive qualified device in the industry. From an RF perspective, it's also one of the best RF performing devices, right? So if you look at you know, 101 dB link budget, we're very proud of our RF performance. So from a hardware perspective, think low power, very good RF performance and ability to fit in small places. From the software perspective, there are localization features that we have in the software that allow our customers 
to get the exact location of the phone or the key fob around the vehicle. So each one of these devices can be running those localization features at the same time and making measurements and then coordinating these measurements to get the best accuracy. And one other feature about this device is, is cool is when we talk about wireless microcontrollers, it's also a general purpose microcontroller. So there is a radio that's running in this device and then there is a general purpose microcontroller that you can use for other housekeeping type things. So you can run the radio and the microcontroller at the same time. So in a previous slide, we talked about TI's commitment to quality. Can you give me some more detail on that? Yeah, sure. So there's automotive standards for a particular device. You know, when you AEC Q100 qualify a device, there's specific revisions of a spec that say you have to go and do these certain environmental tests, lifetime tests, packaging tests, and then you know meet certain electrical specifications. We do that. We definitely follow those those tests, but we also go above and beyond. And the reason we do that is because we know that it's not just a qualification, right? It is a way of life that you have to live in automotive to support the market and the customers and make sure that your device not only passes the test, but also doesn't fail down the line in production testing or in, in vehicles that are 10 years old, for example. And so in, we believe in order to be the best quality device in automotive that we, we need to go above and beyond. And that's what we do. So you see here that you know we're TS16949 certified, and we also have our own special internal processes for inspection and screening and testing so that we're meeting our own internal quality specifications. Many times our own internal quality specifications are tighter than the AACQ100 requirement. And many of our customers' requirements are also tighter as, as well. And we also, in this particular device, it's important that our automotive customers be able to inspect their PCBs during manufacturing and test. And we want to provide a device that allows them to do that. And that's why we went ahead and did the Wendable Flanks package to allow our customers to easily inspect the quality of their manufacturing. We also provide PPAP documentation and support at the request of the customer. Well, that was quite a lot to take in. Can you recap your main points for me, Stephen? Sure, yeah, so key takeaways from today, I would say why BLE and Automotive? It is really the lowest cost and lowest power wireless connectivity solution that you can connect a smartphone with in the vehicle. And once you do that, it opens up a world of opportunities for you to connect into personalization and also the car access market. You can just take your smartphone, you don't have to have a key fob, and now your smartphone has the ability to open your vehicle, start your vehicle, and you don't have to be carrying around two separate things if you don't want to. BLD can also solve relay attack problems in key fob by adding a, a layer of security that existing key fobs don't have today. So really one system, multiple use cases. YTI, again, we're long-term experience in automotive and commitment to developing automotive quality and automotive simple link devices. And so we're gonna continue to develop an automotive platform that allows customers to move from device to device, whether it's I need more memory, I need a different technology within the automotive environment with the least amount of resources and investment from their engineering team. And our software innovation, we're gonna to continue to innovate in our software. So you see a device and that's great. We're gonna have some devices in the future that will continue to expand upon our portfolio. But each one of those devices will have software inside of them and we're gonna to continue to develop new features along the way that will be software compatible and be able to move up and down devices and will be flexible for a lot of the simple link devices. So we're gonna continue software innovation, which we believe is the key to enabling BLE and automotive. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Stephen. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Appreciate the time. Before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about Bluetooth Low Energy for automotive designs from Texas Instruments. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.